high lever into this and you make a good amount of money. So that is a trade, that is a thesis. I think that is a high quality A setup in my book. What is up traders? Fading the data candle is one of the easiest ways to make money in the market. I say easy in air quotes. Trading is hard by default, but it is a pretty good setup. I wanna talk about why. So before we take a look at the chart behind me, I have CPI from October pulled up. I wanna talk about price action and liquidity targets in general. So in a lot of my videos, and you can go and watch some of them, I talk about the volume profile, volume node, support and resistance. All of these are just targets. Something that will happen, and really that will always happen on data candles, whether it is farm payroll, CPI, random news events, whatever it is, is that these are all just reasons for the market to move into one of these targets. So let's say that we have a target on the daily that is 30 points higher than where we are. Well, let's, let's go a little bit higher. Let's say 80 points higher on ES. Now, the average daily range for ES in this market is anywhere from 35 to 70 points. On a very tight range day, it's gonna do about 35, 40 points. And then on a big kind of trend day, we might do 75, 80 points. So if we have a target that's out there and we have a data candle coming, what will happen is, is that data candle will push us into the nearest liquidity target. And then it will reject, it will come back to the mean. If you go and look at all of the different data days, the initial price action in the first hour or so of the market, there's this whipsaw effect. So let's say that we, we open to the green side, it'll go up and up and up. It's gonna hit one of the most obvious liquidity targets. Then it's gonna come back to the PLC. It'll stall out a bit. It'll whipsaw to the bottom side, sweep liquidity down there, and then it'll come back. I use the word sweep. People ask me about that. So I'll try to be crystal clear. When I say sweep liquidity, I mean run through a price target. So if we have the current price is 4,000, there is structure, right? Say there was a previous pivot up at 4,020. So we'll go to 4,025. So we punch through it. We sweep through it. That's what I mean when I say sweeping price levels. Not sweeping it would be forming like a double bottom or a double top. We just touch the exact same price and reject. A lot of times in these data candles, we will sweep liquidity areas. We go through, run through a bunch of people's stops. People have resting stops and orders there. It'll punch through, smoke all those people all at once, and then come back to the mean. You can argue about why this happens. It doesn't really matter why it happens. I have some hypothesis and thesis about why I think it happens. But it happens. It happens all the time, and it's honestly one of the easiest trades to look for. So what I do on day to days, instead of putting any risk on the actual first candle, so data comes out at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the CPI report comes out, candle comes out, is okay, I don't care if it's red or green. I have targets on both sides. I say, okay, it looks like we are close to this liquidity target. The macro trend is up. So I think we're gonna come up and we're gonna touch, we're just gonna kiss some price target, some price area, and then it's gonna come back to the mean or the POC, either in the morning, the morning pre-market POC, or VWAP, right? I talk about those as pretty standard price areas, even as a normal range days. Then it's gonna settle there. So knowing or thinking that it's gonna do that, that's my hypothesis, I'm gonna wait for us to stall out on the first move. When we get close to what is either a major support resistance level, a liquidity target that gets swept, right? We take out those orders. If I see a bunch of stops show up on the book and I'm going to fade that candle. When I say fade, I just mean reverse it. It doesn't mean go short. It just means go the opposite of whatever direction you were going. So if the market opens green, that means I'm gonna short it. If the market, the data candle goes down, opens red, then I'm gonna go long. I do this all the time. It's one of my bread and butter trades and I usually high lever into these. It works so often. And I'll even eat some drawdown on these because I'm pretty confident about these trades. And what's really, really cool about this, and we're actually gonna go through an example here in a second, is that you don't have to hold these super long. You can just go for five, 10 points, but you can high lever into these and make some really good money really, really quickly. And I do this all the time. It's not a 100% thing. Obviously there are trades uh, that go against you. I'm actually gonna use an example. I pulled up one of the days that this would performed poorly, not that well, but it still would have performed because I thought it's a good example to show what happens in real life when your trade plan doesn't work out exactly. You can go and look at all the different day to days, guys. I'm not going to run through every single one of them in this example, but I'll run through this one on October because I think it's a good example of how to actually use proper risk management for a trade idea, take profits early and get out. So let's go ahead, take a look at the charts. You can see how messy my studio is, but now you know. Now you know how messy my studio is, guys. It's not perfect in here, but luckily we have this camera, which gives a great shot as well. So between one of these two, by the way, do 
join us in Discord. Let me redo that. Oh, I didn't even say who I am. If you're new here, my name is Forrest. I invest in stuff. You should too. A ton of cool links down in the description. If you want to sign up for Apex, you can use my code. There's 90% off. Also join us in the Discord. We live trade every single day. There is a room called Trading Floor with voice chat. We are in there. There is a free room as well. Come and say hi, hello. And there's a three day free trial, which you should definitely use. Don't take my word for any of this. I'm a random guy on YouTube. Just come check us out and see for yourself. And if you like it, and if you don't, tell me why, and I'd love to make it better. Let's get back to the video. Cool, so real quick, this is gonna be really simple. So 8.30 a.m. is right here. I'll put a marker. I can do this on TradingView with Alt-V. We have a vertical line. This is October 12th, 2023. Data comes out. I'm on the three minute chart, just for the sake of example. We have my normal kind of indicators on here, a ton of different volume profiles. Let me get rid of the anchored volume profile. We're actually on the daily chart in this case. And let's actually get rid of the visible range volume profile. We just need the session volume profile in this case. So market opens red, we come down and it bounces right here on this data candle. What the heck is right here? What is that 4408 or around this price area? Well, let's just look to the left. Something we say, actually something Sol would say, he's partner in crime in the discord, but looking to the left. And that just means we're looking to the past. We're looking back in the past to see what happened at this price. Why did we react? Something people ask me is why did we bounce here? Why did we do that? It's one of the easiest questions answers guys and girls and I know you're not looking at your chart when you ask me this because if you just look left you'll see why there's gonna be something here there's quite a few things here so we bounce off of here one of the most immediate things we got to ignore this dip because this is for this session but let's look to previous so we see that there was a one two three and we actually punctured through we we swept this liquidity here but we see that there's structure around this price at 4408 we can also see on the previous session that there's this low value area right so there's a high volume node with a steep cliff right here, right right there, right smack dab there. So as soon as I see us run out of steam on this data candle, right at in the top of the structure, we're like wicking the top of this structure. Think of this almost like this price area as, and this is gonna be a little weird, but it's kind of have to think about it. This is the subjectivity. This is how I think about this, guys. This price structure, kind of like Play-Doh. And we're coming into this area and we're dipping our toes in this Play-Doh. So it's not perfect. We see that it's not even perfect here. This isn't perfect, but all of this confluence gives us a price area that we can pretty confidently play off of. So as soon as we hit this, I'm thinking, man, I want a long here. Now, I know how this plays out because we have the power of, you know, all of this data, but in real time, I would be looking for a short. We're up here. There's two areas I'd be looking for a short. We have a huge gap here. I'd be looking here, right? We see we went through here and I would be looking anywhere in this gap, but we have this price. We have this structure here. So this is like literally right in here is a great place to take along. Now, I said earlier that it'll come back to the mean. It'll come back to the pre-market POC. Let's actually replay this and see how that worked out. So hit the replay button. We can see that the POC right now at 8.12 or actually at 8.27 a.m. on October 12th is here at 44.19. I don't know how close we get to this. We'll see. We know that the price you know, didn't come all the way back up to where it started, but let's see where it comes back to. So I'll hit shift right, let this play. Comes up a little bit, POC moves to 44.20. 27, move over, data candle comes down, hits there. I'm looking for a long at this point, right? Because we have this, this structure that I called out right around here, we hit long, and I'd be looking for around the POC or that POC that was here earlier. High lever into this, you could do two or three ES, and you make a good amount of money. The opportunity on this, by the way, do this, and if you come to this POC is about 14 points, and then the previous POC is it's about 10 points. Hit shift right, comes all the way down to this 4408. Oh, this was the actual price here. Let's remeasure that. So from 4408, it's 18 points, and then to that previous POC, probably around 10 points comes back up and it hits this 4420 price area. So let me stop the replay and it brought me to the current date, which is pretty annoying. I wanna to go to October 12th and let's hit that replay again. I wanna track the pre-market POC a little bit better this time, 4420. So it's right around 4420. 4419, let's see where we get. 4420, it's right here at 4419. Let's do a little Alt-J, boom, 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 boom. I wanna see where it is before it shifts. It shifted up, it went to 4426. Data candle comes out, comes back up, and it, it hits. So I would trade into this 4419. That's how I would actually do it. That shift was too close to the data drop for me to use this POC as a target. I would use this previous POC 4419. So the actual trade opportunity there using
seeing how I actually trade is around 11 points. Not a huge amount of space doesn't matter, guys. I wanna make this point, it's not related to this, but how much money you make in the market is not based off of the size of the move. And I know that sounds weird. A trade is a trade. A trade might be three points, it could be five points, 100 points. How much money you make is based off of leverage. Now you're probably saying forced, obviously the, the amount of points determines the money you make. But for most traders, it doesn't. For most of you, you're adjusting your position sizing and you're thinking about your P&L when you trade. I know you are, unless you've been doing this for a while. Most of you are P&L traders and that can be okay. But again, the amount of money you make is based off the amount of leverage you put in. So this 10 point move, right? This 12 point move actually, I can make, you know, seven $75, whatever, playing playing minis. You know, if I play a one contract mini, it wouldn't be 75, it'd be five times 1150, which is, let's just call it 11 points, 55 bucks. If I play 10 contracts, that's much more money. If I play 10 full-size contracts, that's a lot more money. So the amount of money that you make on a trade is mostly driven by the leverage that we use. It, it isn't driven by the size of the trade because most of us are deciding or making the decision on leverage. The trade is gonna do what it's gonna do. You're either gonna get your 10 points or you're not. So leverage is the primary way that we actually affect our p &L. So I wanna say that. So that is a trade, that is a thesis. I think that is a high quality A setup in my book. After this, I'm pretty hands off. So the market plays out, it comes back down. I might be thinking about another long here, but honestly, with the amount of volume here, well, this is the open now, but on the open, coming off on the open, I'm very, very hesitant. And I know how this plays out, right? We ult ultimately have a, a, a trend down day, but I'm just looking for this first trade. After that, I'm thinking about normal market mechanics, you know, looking, we actually came down into the previous day's POC. We swept this price. That's a good long here. That's one of the, I did a video. I'm pretty sure that video is out talking about, you know, liquidity sweeps. We swept this POC and you could take that long. So that's that's a good trade. But after that, on a day like CPI and on a day to day, I'm pretty hands off of the market at that point in time. So that's really all I wanted to talk about. Again, it doesn't matter which way this opens. If we open, this opens up, same trade, you know, you fade it coming, coming back the other way as well. Very simple trade idea, very, very powerful. These trades, on these day to days, if you're a prop trader, it doesn't matter if you're using Apex, Top Step, whatever the heck it is. These are high quality trades that you can use trading your personal account. You can pass, you can hit your profit target at least. A lot of these uh, prop firms with this trade, I've had plenty of people do it. So, so that's it for this video. Put that trade in your playbook. These day to days, there's a few different data drops per month. Each of them present an opportunity with this exact same trade, right? Pre market POC and VWAP. We didn't look at VWAP, but you just plot both of those levels. Look for the data candle and then look to fade back into that price area, the POC or VWAP. The reason that those price areas work is because that is the median of the auction at that point in time. And if we move far away from the median very quickly, we're likely to whipsaw back to the median before we do something else. It's different than building value over time. Obviously the market moves, which is normal. It goes up, it goes down hundreds of points. But if it moves quickly, and most of our participation, if we move quickly over here, and most of the market, most of the players in the market last played over here, we're gonna move back to where people played until we you know, create and discover what the true value of the auction is at that point in time. So that's some theory behind it. Try it out in practice, manage your risk appropriately. If it's your first time, do not just take my word for any of these things. Your money is your responsibility at, at the end of the day. But yeah, hit subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate each and every one of you. Channel's been growing very, very quickly, which I love to see it. My passion is helping people make money. However it is, it doesn't have to be day trading, but it's super, super cool. And, and you guys, you know, fuel me with your questions and energy. But yeah, I'll stop talking. See you in the next video. Peace.